Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Camel 4, What to Expect. My name is Otavio Rodolfo I am a principal software engineer at Red Hat. Um, I'm also a committer and a member of the Apache Camel PMC. You can find me online. I'm usually on uh, Twitter, uh, but you also have my email here should you have any questions after this talk. In, re in real life, uh, I live here in Brno for eight years already. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I still do not speak fluent Czech, but I keep trying. Uh, on the agenda today, I'm going to give a very brief overview of the Apache Camel project. Then I will talk about the motivations and objectives for uh, releasing a new major version of the framework. Uh, I will discuss a bit about the changes under the hood. I'll complement with uh, my thoughts on how you can plan the upgrade, and I'll finish with the questions and answers. Uh, the Apache Camel project is basically organized in multiple sub-projects, uh, Camel Core being the largest one of them. It's the one that provides the enterprise integration patterns and components. That is what most of the people uh, tend to know about. But then we also have some sub-projects that focus on specific technologies or specific problem domains. We have things like Camel Spring Boot and Camel Quarkus, and we have also things like Camel K, which focus on providing a lightweight runtime uh, for Kubernetes and OpenShift. If you have never seen what a Camel uh, wrote uh, looks like, uh, I'm sending, uh, showing an, an example here. Uh, this one is written in Java, basically shows how you could uh, pick some data from Kafka and send it to a queue on Amazon SQS. This route could be written here in XML or YAML, among other languages. Um, with the course of developing Camel 3, we kind of created a few new uh, features and um, uh, projects uh, that they will become more prevalent with Camel 4. Uh, the first one of these projects is Camel JBank. Camel JBank is basically a way to quickly run uh, the routes you create. You don't have to actually write a full-blown Java project to do that. You basically pass a YAML file and uh, CamelJBank can run it for you. This makes it a very nice tool for prototyping routes. So whenever you want to try something, CamelJBank can help you on that. CamelJBank also has features to simplify bootstrapping uh, integration projects for one for our sub-projects, things like Camel Quarkus. You can quickly export that, those routes for um, running on those runtimes. And lastly, Camel JBank also provides functionality on which you can uh, implement new things. Uh, for instance, internally within this project, Camel Caravan, we use Camel JBank. Camel Caravan is a toolkit for designing routes. Basically, with Camel Caravan, you can use those drag and drop features to select components and patterns and design, them, design the integration in a visual way. It basically works as a, an extension for Visual Studio Code. Uh, and Camel Caravan will save the YAML route for you so you don't have to to actually write code. And one of the nice things that it has is this arrow button, which uses Camel JBank to run that integration that you have designed. But uh, I'm here today to talk specifically about Camel 4, what we had in mind when working on this uh, new version of our framework. And when we think about the motivations for working on Camel, Camel 4, the one of them, and I think the primary motivation was the release of the Jakarta 10 set of APIs. Camel itself does not use Jakarta APIs, but many of the libraries that we use to implement our components do. 
So with the goal of uh, being able to upgrade to those libraries, we had this uh, motivation uh, for KMO4. Then we have another big motivation, which is Java 17. Uh, the community of engineers working on the Java language has been, for many years already, developing newer and greater features for the Java language. Uh, and we want to be able to make use of those features, both for making our code easier to maintain, but as well as for implementing new features for our community. And then we have a set of projects that are very important for uh, the Java community in general, and they are widely used. We have here things like Camus, uh, sorry, Spring Framework 6, Spring Boot 3, and Quarkus 3. Those three projects are widely used uh, around the Java ecosystem, and they too are somehow also motivated in releasing new features based on both Java 17 and Jakarta 10. So it came out as the perfect opportunity for us to work on a new version of Camo 4, aligning with all these five uh, items. When we think about our goals for, for, for this release, what we want to achieve, um, as always, for when you are working on a new version of a framework, you always think of the foundations you want to, to build. And with Camel 4, we again fought on building foundations for the future. So that's why we are aiming at supporting Java 17 as a minimum version. Um, as I said, we want to make use of these great and new features of the Java language both for our um, uh, work on the framework as well as for the, uh, implementing new things for our community. And we see Camel 4 as a forward-looking release. That is, we're already looking forward to the upcoming Java 21 LTS release, which should be, I think, around September. Should be out, I think, around September. And one last point is when we raised this discussion with the community as having Java 17 as a minimum version, we did receive some feedback uh, from the community questioning whether we could support Java 11. But it turns out that uh, since many of the libraries and many of the motivations that we have are already aligned with Java 17 as a minimum, it would be kind of difficult for us to, to do that. Looking at um, our work in maintaining Camel and what we did with Camel 3, things that worked well, things that gave us some, some additional uh, effort, uh, we identified uh, Camel Caraf which is one of our sub-projects, as one of the pain points in, in our ecosystem. So we decided with Camel 3 to downgrade the effort we have on maintaining this sub-project uh, to as a best effort. In practice, this means that we will decouple the releases from, uh, of Camel Caraf from the releases of Camel Core. Uh, so what it means is that when we release a new version of Camel Core, there won't necessarily be a new version of Camel Caraf. In the same, same kind of thought, we also took this opportunity to work on goals to reduce our maintenance effort. Camel is kind of a big project, uh, so as always, a new version is a good opportunity to do that. So we focused on doing some internal cleanups. Um, as the time goes, goes on and on, on a project that is already 17 years old, there is always some technical debt that piles up. So with Camel 4, we did quite a lot of cleanups. I will elaborate a bit more about this in uh, subsequent uh, slides. 
we also took the opportunity to look at things that within the Java ecosystem are either uh, being superseded by newer versions or stopped being used. Uh, for instance, we know that nowadays most of the projects are already using uh, JUnit 5. So we decided to drop the support for JUnit 4 in this release. And we also took the opportunity to look at the library of components that we have. Camo has about 300 components, a bit more than that. So when we look at, at the components that we make available for the community and look at, at both the technologies and the underlying projects that offer the functionality that we use, we identified about 33 of those that either have become unmaintained or were evolving on a pace that was not the same as the rest of the community. And by that I mean, for instance, uh, by this point in time, they still do not support Java, uh, Java 17 or have not yet been supporting Jakarta 10 and so on. Things that would kind of make our release more difficult. And as a result of this evaluation, we had 33 components that were affected. Of those, 20 can be easily replaced uh, by others already available in Camo. And here I'm talking things, for example, Camo Active MQ, which you can somewhat easily uh, replace with Camo JMS. Uh, and of those components, most of them have shown little usage uh, based on what we could gather from Jira, uh, mailing lists, uh, messages, and chat requests. And one point that is important to highlight here as well is that in some cases, these are temporary. We have, for example, as I mentioned here, Camo Active MQ. Uh, the community is already working uh, in resurrecting this component based on a newer version that supports Jakarta 10. So it might, it might be that this number of 33 components affected will be uh, reduced as the developing, development of Camo 4 progress. Talking a little bit about the changes under the hood, these are things that normally wouldn't matter mo most for the users, but I think it can provide a good insight about the work that is going on. Uh, one of these things is what we call the internal plugin manager. Camel internally has a way to allow the configuration of many things, how exchanges are created, how messages are created how error handlers are created. And this is done through what we call a plugin interface. In Camel 3, this interface was not very uniform. With Camel 4, we look at, at the way we were, were working with them and we worked to provide a uniform interface. This is something that does not, again, affect the users, but it turns out that uh, reduces the maintenance effort for us. Um, we also look at, at things that were somehow public but shouldn't be, things like introspection support, which is used only internally. And when not talking about code specifically, about the internal code, there are also changes in testing. Uh, for instance, we are looking we are, we are aiming at providing clean builds for Power and uh, S390X architectures. This is Linux and on mainframe. Uh, of course, Camel runs fine on these architect architectures, uh, but we also want the community to be able to build and run the tests uh, on, on them. Um, again, on the same topic of reducing the maintenance effort, we reevaluated how we were doing some of the testing uh, in, uh, for our components. Uh, the way Camo3 used it to do that was through a kind of complex hierarchy of types to set up the Camo context. 
With Camo 4, there is a new JUnit, based ex J JUnit 5 based extension that makes it much easier to set up the context. We basically uh, use the register extension and the uh, JUnit does the bulk of the work for us. Eventually, we hope that this will become something that we encourage the users to do to simplify their part of the testing as well. Uh, and lastly, on the part of uh, internal changes, nowadays we know that uh, supply chain attacks has been a big topic. And uh, within this topic of security, many projects are providing the software view of materials. With Camo4, we are going to provide that as well. In this new release, one topic that we focused a lot was on the part of performance improvements. Uh, some time ago, uh, it became kind of famous, this JDK issue, JDK 8180 uh, Basically, simplifying a lot here, uh, this issue is related to a performance penalty that can happen when you do type checks. If you're working on, on any application that is performance sensitive, I strongly recommend looking at this material that uh, I'm showing here, especially cracking the scalability wall, which was a talk uh, given at, uh, I think, DevOx UK, where two of the engineers that worked uh, a lot on uncovering this issue and uh, working ar around it, talk about the implications of this issue, what was uh, uh, done to solve it, and uh, why Java developers should care about it. As we worked to work around this issue and fix the problems that we identified as part of that, we optimized several components on Camel, notably SIDA and Disruptor. We've, of course, some, some changes also happening on core, which benefit basically all the 300 components that we have. And of course, as uh, during the course of investigating these perf uh, this performance issues and working to, to correct them, we came out with other micro optimizations that alone wouldn't do much uh, changes, but in aggregate, could, uh, can provide some nice performance improvements. And uh, to showcase a little bit about what I'm talking about in terms of performance improvements, uh, I'm going to show a few examples. For instance, on the case of SIDA, which is a component that is kind of uh, widely used, uh, in a scenario with low contention, we have 19% uh, faster throughput uh, with Camo4. Uh, on a scenario with four consumers and one producer, 18% faster. With a little bit more contention, eight consumers and one producer, 51% faster, and so on. Also, uh, Disruptor is another component that is also used, especially in scenarios where, where you have uh, multiple producers. Uh, on the case of Disruptor, we have 36% uh, faster results with Camo4, and so on. Uh, overall, what we found out is that Camo4, uh, in our tests, it was 80%, it was faster 80% of the times uh, for the SIDA component when compared with Camo 3.20.4. Uh, for the Disruptor component, when compared with 3.18.6, Camo 4 was, was faster 80.6% 8 of the time. And with uh, comparing with 3.20, Camo 4 was faster 91.9% of the time. Uh, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about the performance improvements that we work at on Camo4, uh, I suggest looking at this blog post where 
we discuss a little bit more about the, the changes that we did, what we found out, uh, some of the metrics that we gather, and more. I hope that uh, by this time I kind of sold you the idea of Chemo 4, and I hope uh, you are all excited about upgrading to this new version. Uh, it is not, uh, the final version is not out yet, but we already are working on a release candidate. Uh, we have a few milestone, milestones available already. But what should you expect of a migration from Camel 3 to Camel 4? Well, first of all, the migration from Camel 3 to Camel 4 should be much easier than was from Camel 2 to Camel 3. We are aiming for a drop-in replacement. Uh, additionally, you should not expect any kind of DSLs uh, incompatibilities. Camel has, I think, a quite good track record of retaining this backwards compatibility, uh, and it should not be different uh, this time. Um, with, with regards to the planning, one thing that might change a little bit is what kind of packaging of camel you are using. If you are using a downstream or a commercial distribution, do talk to your vendor. Uh, they may have uh, their, their plans already. Uh, if you are using the upstream version, the, the open source one from Apache, uh, the usual recommendations for, for any upgrades uh, matter here. Uh, save time for testing. We do our best to ensure that Camel has a good testing coverage, but there's only so much we can, we can cover. Uh, do plan to provide feedback to the community. If you try the upgrade, something is not working, uh, do, do share that with us. Do open tickets, go to our uh, mailing lists or chats and provide the feedback to us and share the knowledge with the rest of the community. The problems that you face today might help uh, someone else going through the same problem in the future. It also helps us as a community to learn from the problems that the community is having, and with time as we work on other versions, other features, we can learn from that. Uh, the path for upgrading, sorry, the path to Camel 4 uh, might, uh, might depend uh, where exactly you are. Uh, during the course of developing Camel 3, there were a few important milestones um, in terms of what we achieved. Uh, for instance, the, last, the first version where we officially supported Java 17, the last version where we supported Java 8, and so on. So things like this might matter as well on your uh, upgrade plans. Uh, in general, as I said, migrating from Camel 3 should be relatively easy, especially if you are using maintained technologies. If you have some component that's not gonna be removed or uh, have been temporarily remove it, that should be uh, a good sign as well. Uh, if you're using one of the modern projects that we have, Camel Spring Boot, Camel Quarkus, Camel K, migration should be fairly simple. Uh, if you're using the plain Camel Core, uh, a good sign is if you're using a relatively newer version uh, of Camel 3, especially a relatively newer LTS version. Uh, a bit more effort might be required if you are using an older LTS version, especially older than 3.14. Not because we broke features or because uh, some incompatibility along the way, but because of the cost of many small changes aggregated all over the time. And some code changes definitely will be required if you are using those internal APIs that I mentioned that were changed. Uh, I don't think, um, I think many 
uh, in the community are not using those APIs, but if for any reason uh, you are, then do, do prepare for some code changes. Those, those changes also should not be so, com so complex, but of course it's something that will eventually change. Uh, if you are using OSGI, as I said on, on, the, on the beginning of this talk, we are downgrading our, um, our efforts on Kemokaraf to a best effort. So ideally, you should plan to move your OSGI workloads to Kemoquarkus, Chemo Spring Boot, Chemo K, Chemo Kafka Connector, any other project that might suit you, uh, suit your needs. Uh, a few user impacting changes, uh, which should not be uh, widely uh, impactful, uh, are in terms of logging. Uh, with Chemo 4, we upgraded SLF4J API to version 2.x. Uh, this version brings a few different uh, dependencies. So depending on what you use as a logging, you might need to adjust a little bit the dependencies that you use. Uh, one of the exchange patterns that we had and was not widely used called in optional out was removed. And for those using the camel main, uh, and using a main listener to configure the camel main, one of the methods that was used to perform the, that configuration, uh, the method configure, was removed. It was already deprecated on camel 3, and with camel 4, this method is not av available anymore. For those users, they should move to either the after configure or the before configure method. Uh, if you are still on Camel 2, then that migration path is a little bit more problematic. First, Camel 3 was modularized, so the dependencies that Camel 2 provided are different than the ones provided by Camel 3. So migrating from Camel 2 involves adjusting those dependencies and package changes and so on. Uh, there were also changes in terms of handling multiple and single contexts, uh, and Camel 3 also brought uh, a Java 11 as a minimum version. So it's quite a lot more work than uh, the migration from Camel 3. Closing this, uh, this talk about Camel 4, I leave these uh, comments that uh, even though Camel 4 is not out yet, in terms of there's no a fully stable version, we already have several milestones available. Our release candidate is planned for just a few weeks in the future, uh, so do start planning now. Uh, do do plan to adjust your applications, see how they work with Camel 4, and provide the feedback to the community. Uh, avoid un unmaintained versions. We still have many users in, on the community either using very old LTS versions of Camel 3 or even using Camel 2 uh, completely. So please do plan to upgrade those. Uh, we are not maintaining those and the community is not receiving fixes for CVEs and bug fixes at all. Reevaluate uh, usage of old technologies and standards. If you are integrating with some tool that has become unmaintained, that's something you should look at at your uh, architecture and see uh, what you can do to uh, move away from that because it, there's a good chance that the component used to do to, to integrate with that uh, might not be available in the future. And as uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, please share the knowledge. It helps the whole community. It helps us to learn what we did well, what where we failed, and, and we learn to do better in the next version. Uh, and with that, I think we are open for questions and answers if there's any. Uh, what about the camel based Kafka Connect connectors? Are they still planned for camel 4? 
Yes. Uh, so the question is, what about the Camel Kafka connector if it's planned for Camel 4? And the answer is yes, it's planned for Camel 4. Um, we, he worked uh, the Camel Kafka connector uh, on the course of the developing, development of Camel 3 so that it uses uh, camelets. Uh, and as we progress with development of Camel 4, we will certainly work on a new version of Camel Kafka connector that makes use of Camel 4 engine and the new Camel camelets that will become available. Thank you. Welcome. Any other question? So uh, thank you, everyone. Uh,